Good day, good day, good day, everybody. How are you guys doing? Bersha! <laughs> Bersha, you see what I meant, right? When I said your video was a bit long. It ate all my internets. <laughs> Christine Marsh, how are you going? Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Robert Broker, thank you so much for tuning in. Everybody else that's in the house, thank you so much. I'm hoping you had a fantastic weekend. I sure did. Uh, took my girls out for for the day on Saturday. We went to some old and abundant gold mine. And um, the only reason why they left the mines apparently is because um, you know that there was there was no market for the for the, for the gold within Victoria. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. In as much as people want gold. Um, you know, the, the, you know, they should have somebody who wanted to buy it off of them. So if you don't see me in the next couple of days, I might have gone out there and figured out how they actually did it in the gold um, era there and maybe get me a claim of gold. All right. So, I mean, obviously, if you um, know what this show is about, uh, my name is Prosper Tarovinga and very excited to bring you on board today's show where I'm talking about how you can master your own self, your own mind, and your own discipline. And we're talking about Monday is not the problem. Remember, you're always going to have 52, um, is it 52 Mondays a week or how, how many ever Mondays that you're going to be having? Um, you know, they're always going to be coming. You are still going to be the constant person. So what should you do as a person to actually get ready for all the other Mondays that are left in 2017 and the ones that are coming up in 2018? The reason why I do this is because I believe every um, online business that's actually working really, really hard should be profitable and enjoyable. And I also believe that as online business uh, people, we should be able to create for and relate to those that we're going to be demanding money off of. So that's the reason why you have to be on point, whether it's a Monday, whether it's a Tuesday, whether it's a Sunday, because now we live outside the 24 hour global box. All right. You never know where your customers are checking in from. And so you really got to be prepared for that. OK, so that's the reason why every single day, uh, every single business day uh, at 2 p.m. AEST, we sit around here for 30 minutes so we can help you earn more money with less struggle. And in the process, I teach a simple four step system that is designed to help coaches, consultants and service professionals like yourself to brand market and um, you know, sell your services so that you have a business that's actually enjoyable and profitable. Now, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, oh, I really hope today, you know, you, you are all well rested from the weekend. Nicole, how are you doing, my love? Thank you so much. And I'm still buzzing from our chat on Friday. Thank you so much for um, your gratitude right there. I know in as much as it's hard to believe that, um, you know, this whole entrepreneurship is an easy thing. It's all to do with your mind. All right. I must say that again. It's all to do with your mind. It's not it's not going to be a, a simple trick or a hack or it's not going to be, you know, somebody, you know, coaching you or whatever it is. It's going to be up to you to actually take on the button and say, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is how I'm going to uh, want to live my life, etc., etc. OK, uh, somebody can give you the five step process for you to losing weight. But if you see a hot fudge Sunday, um, you know, in front of you, are you going to let it go? Or are you going to think of the diet that you're supposed to be uh, doing? Do you know what I mean? There's always the debate of should I sleep or should I go to the deep to the gym or should I study um, or, you know, not read, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all up to you. Do you know what I mean? No one is going to come and knock on your house's door and say, hey, uh, Scott, hey, Patricia, hey, Nicole, it's time for you to actually start working in your business. It's all to do with the self-discipline that you put onto yourself, the self-discipline that you, you hold yourself accountable for. Everybody else that goes on to a coach or to a program and wants a guarantee, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever asked yourself, what am I guaranteeing to bring into this world? What am I guaranteeing to, um, you know, in order for me to receive the money or the lifestyle that I'm looking for? All right. 
Ranisha, thank you so much for tuning in. And Deborah Harris, thank you so much for tuning in. There's a lot of studies that show that people with self-discipline are much happier. People with self-discipline have better relationships. People with self-discipline have businesses that are actually profitable and enjoyable. But why is that? Because when you put yourself up to a certain level, nothing can ever put you down. It is what happens in our brain, it is what happens in our minds that stops us dead in our tracks. All right? Every time you watch a scary movie, all right, okay? Every time you watch a scary movie, you, 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 you start, you know, tripping on yourself. But the first thing you would have done is grabbed popcorn, you would have grabbed a drink, you would have made sure the seat is comfortable, and everything was fine up until something that you put in your head made you start thinking of other things. All right? So every single time that you go in and you want to work on your business, it's just the self-control that you really need to put in check. And once you've got that, guess what? You'll be able to stand in front of a crowd. You'll be able to do, um, you know, things that a lot of people don't actually think um, are possible. All right? Because at the end of the day, people with a higher degree of self-control, they spend less time debating whether or not to indulge themselves in, 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 in certain behaviors. First of all, some behaviors that are detrimental to their health, or second of all, behaviors that will make them um, you know, procrastinate or not complete their tasks. All right. So if you're self-disciplined, you would know that every single day, whether it's Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday, you wake up at a particular time, you do a particular thing and you, you get particular results. Monday will stop becoming an option. You would wake up at exactly the same day, uh, a time as you would wake up on a Sunday morning or on a Saturday uh, morning, knowing that your outcome is determined by the work and the input that you put in. That is self-discipline. All right. And when you start looking at self-discipline around your relationships, your health, you're able to make positive decisions that will then help you perform well. Humans are creatures of habit. All right, right now, if I would ask you to start brushing your teeth, you would do so without even thinking of what's needed. You know you need toothpaste. You know you need a toothbrush. It's, it's things that are already ingrained in your mind. You do that subconsciously. What if you start making habits that, you know, like reading, habits like speaking in front of a camera, habits like speaking to other people that would help you in your business? It becomes effortless. And the more you do things effortlessly, the more you don't even feel the pinch when you actually really need to do it at the right time. And there's never going to be a right time. You never know what piece of content you're putting out there is actually going to be it for you. All right. So at the end of the day, just don't let, you know, small impulses or feelings detect your choices. All right. I put up a status a little bit earlier on that don't let something or someone with the significance of a speed hump become the roadblock of your entire life. You know, just like I was talking about a scary movie earlier on, you knew your house was perfect before you you switched off the light and started watching uh, Saw 3 or whatever it is. What makes you now think that after three seconds of watching that video, everything in your house is haunted? It's what you do in your head. It's what you think to yourself. And it's the disciplines that you've infected on yourself that cause you to react in such a way. All right. So you want to make, you know, level headed decisions. As a result, you need to make sure that you are satisfying, you know, your disciplines and you are actually living a life that leaves you with a happier existence. All right. It's not easy, I know, waking up every single day on a Monday and, and being on top of things. But if your habits and if your disciplines are already in tune with that which you want and that which you wish for in your entire life, nothing will ever seem like work. And that's the reason why they say everything um, that you do, um, if you really, really love it, it never seems to be like work. All right. And Robert says that happened to me the first time I watched the grunge. <laughs> what did you start scaring yourself? OK, so, you know, there are things that you need to learn, especially, um, you know, things like self-discipline to actually gain the willpower to live a happier life. 
Why do you think some people that are successful, they're always hitting goal after goal? It's the habits that they have. All right. If you're going to take control of your habits and also your choices, all right, every single day I show up, whether I like it or not, I've explained this to you guys, whether there's something going on in my family or not, it is a discipline that I want to instill onto myself. All right. That's because I'm strong up there. It's the habits and the choices that I've made that I need to show up so that I can help somebody to actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And Robert says, yes, I didn't sleep that night, but kept watching over and over and over again. Exactly. Um, some people are a glutton for punishment, Robert. So maybe your stimulation is to just scare yourself so that you release endorphins or whatever it is. Look into that. Okay. It might not just be the scary movie, but it might actually be the way you are conditioned. All right. And Jeffrey, thank you so much for tuning in, man. All right, so I'm going to try and go through some of the powerful things that I actually do and some of the powerful things that I've also seen other people do in order for them to actually master their own self-discipline. First of all, the one thing about discipline is knowing what your weaknesses are. Some, I know the whole um, thing, our human existence, we look down upon anything that's deemed as weak. We hardly ever talk about our weaknesses. We only want to talk about our strengths and what makes us tick. But when you know your weaknesses, you know what to avoid. All right. You know what not to be. That's the reason why some rich people want to hang around poor people so that they know what not to be, so that they know what, how not to act, so that they know how not to dress. All right. I'm not, I'm not being, um, you know, um, um, you know, racist or whatever it is, but then I'm just trying to explain to you that you need, because we live in a world of duality, all right? You need right and wrong for you to know what is um, the right way or the right path. And Scott says, uh, choice is the greatest um, revelation I received. Thank you so much for that contribution there. When you can make choices of, of your own, then you know you are actually self-disciplined, okay? When you know your weaknesses as well, like I was about to say, um, the one thing is we all have our weaknesses, but we never get to study them. We never take time to actually know what it is that, um, you know, is our biggest weaknesses. Whether, like, uh, Robert, your weakness is wanting to watch a scary movie in order for you to, to feel validated or something like that, whether they're snacks or whether it's food or whether it's uh, potato chips or whether it's chocolate uh, chip cookies, whatever, or whether it's technology, it's slowly becoming a weakness um, for other people. Facebook is actually a big weakness for other people or any game that you might be playing. They have similar effects on us. You know why? Because as soon as they come in, as soon as they take precedent, Guess what happens? We stop everything that we're doing in order to satisfy that weakness. But if you're not sure what that weakness is, if you don't acknowledge your shortcomings, whatever it might be, it might be Facebook, those games, watching movies or whatever. Too often, a lot of people would either try to pretend that they don't have those vulnerabilities or that it doesn't actually exist. And guess what happens? The more you try and resist it, the more it tries to surface. You know why? Because it is a thing. All right. So, you know, and some people try to cover up, you know, some of these pitfalls by just saying, oh, it's only being human. But once if you actually start knowing what your biggest weaknesses are, you own up to your flaws. You own up to what is actually putting you back. If it's TV, um, if it's games, if it's, you know, company that's not putting you um, further, something like that. You can't overcome it until you actually bring it to light. All right. So start studying what your weaknesses are and figure out how you can actually get rid of them instead of trying to avoid them. That way you can start cultivating self-discipline. All right. Sometimes, you know, your weakness is probably talking to people um, online or on video. Just keep talking to people on video and don't post the videos up until one day you actually post it. Because you know why you actually laid, um, you know, put in some value. And before you know it, 
You are actually putting out content so that your customers know exactly what you do and they will be buying from you. And that, my friend, will make your business profitable and enjoyable. All right? So figure out what your weaknesses are instead of trying to hide them. And the more you know them, the more you would know how to overcome them. And usually, one other thing, weaknesses usually play around um, hand in hand with temptations. Have you ever noticed that normally when you, you want to quit eating something or you want to go on a diet, people around you start presenting you with that sort of food or you know, if you, you're trying to quit smoking, people around you are always just passing around a cigarette or things like that, all right? You want to remove yourself or you want to remove temptations from around you if you really want to be self-disciplined. Like I said, we, we are human. We, 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 we fall in for the finer things of life, but not all of them are usually the best. Some things will inhibit our productivity. Some things will inhibit our confidence. Some things will inhibit our own self-esteem. Because if you smell cigarette smoke, how are you going to be in front of your clients? All right. So like the saying goes out of sight, out of mind. You know, it might be silly or it might sound like it's a very silly, um, you know, uh, phrase, but it's a very powerful advice. Out of sight, out of mind. So if you get rid of the biggest temptations that you have in your environment, you will simply just improve on your self-discipline. If you're a sucker or a tickler for, for cake or sweet things, just don't have sweet things in your cupboard. Do you know what I mean? If, if, you're, if you, um, you know, your biggest temptation is Facebook and you just continuously scroll, why not give yourself maybe time or even just get rid of Facebook up until you've made it a reward for you to actually be on Facebook? Out of sight, out of mind, whatever you don't have around you is not going to be registering in your subconscious. All right? So I always talk about this. If you want to eat healthier, just toss the junk food in the trash. Yeah, if you want to improve your productivity at work, turn off social media notifications or even just silence your mobile phone. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, whatever you don't pay attention to is not going to surface in your body or is not going to surface around you to distract you. So the fewer distractions that you have, the more focused you're going to be in actually accomplishing your goals. All right. So you really want to set yourself up for success every single day by ditching bad influences. All right. Gretel. Um, Gretel is a really, very good friend of mine. Uh, we went out together over the weekend. Thanks for tuning in, by the way. And her and my wife have started this, you know, diet fad um, that they're going to be doing. It's, it's really beautiful to watch. You know why? Because they are actually doing it. You know, they're actually going out of their way to, to, to take away all the distractions in, um, you know, in front of them, which is the sweet foods, etc., etc. And they, I think, have set clear goals. I'll be checking in with them and I hope they have an execution plan. All right. So that's one other thing. Once you've taken away all the temptations, once you've taken away all the distractions and you know your weaknesses, make sure you've got clear goals and you've got a way to actually get through to them. The best way to do anything is to start with the end in sight. This is how you do it. Just like a GPS. When you, when you want to go to um, you know, Brisbane, you type in Brisbane first in the GPS, and then the GPS works itself backwards to where you are exactly um, you know, on the map. All right? it, doesn't, it doesn't start from where you are and start figuring, it, figuring out where your destination is. So if you have an execution plan and if you've got clear and set goals, you actually have the discipline to wake up every single day and work on your business or the people that you're going to be, um, you know, asking money off of. All right. If you really, really hope to achieve self-discipline, you must have a clear vision of what you're hoping to accomplish. Okay. You must have a clear vision of where you want to go and how you're going to do it. And you must also have an understanding of what success means to you. Once you have all of that, once it's all clear, once you actually know where you're going and once you know how you are going to be doing it, no Monday or no Mondayitis will ever get to you. You know why? Because Monday is only a couple of hours that are also part of your grand scheme of plans. Yeah? Monday is just a few hours. 
Stop giving Monday the respect that it doesn't need, um, you know, on your way to success. Do you know what I mean? So it's just a few hours that you have to go through on your way to the bigger goal. So after all, if you don't know where you're going, it's easy for you to lose, um, you know, track or it's easy for you to be distracted by smaller days or smaller hours that you have to go through in order for you to actually win the final, um, you know, destination or whatever your, um, you know, your, your, your success, um, you know, place looks like for you. All right, so you need to have a clear plan and each of the steps that you're going to be taking needs to be in the order that you are actually enjoying it in the process because the more you stop enjoying what you're doing, you will backtrack. So in order for you to reach your goals, it has to be something you practically are enjoying to do. All right, figure out who you become when you are doing those things and start becoming friends with that person. All right, and then you then grow into that person because the more you like something or some sort of feature that comes out when you're presenting, just like I enjoy meeting every single one of you guys coming in live with me right now. And the more that, um, you know, it's like a drug for me now. You know, I enjoy it so much that if it's a weekend or so, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, it's 2 p.m. Am I supposed to be going live or not? The adrenaline, you know, of, of having a live conversation with people, anything can happen. All right? Anything can happen. And that's what, that's, that's my high. That's what I ride on. Musaka Duncan, thank you so much for tuning in, man. So you want to sort of see what, what how, who, the person you become while you're doing those things. If you actually enjoy being that person, it will, it will enhance you to become more of that. Yeah? And one other thing that you can do is to create a mantra to keep yourself focused. Have you ever noticed I always keep repeating the same thing that I want to help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. In the process, my business is getting profit. In the process, I'm also enjoying working in the business and I want to impart that onto you too. All right? So once you have a mantra or some sort of vision line or some sort of manifesto, if you keep working and plugging towards that, you are actually speaking your dreams into existence. Yeah? And I know a lot of successful people that actually use this technique to stay on track in order to establish a clear finish line. Like, I want a business that's profitable and a business that I enjoy working in. And that's the reason why every single day I come around and I spend time with you guys like this. And um, Robert said, I consider that Saturday show I'm on weekly therapy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So at the end of the day, all of these things, as you can notice, guys, it's got nothing to do with a trick or a hack. It's got nothing to do with the software. It's got nothing to do with the shiny object. It's got a whole lot to do with the star player that is you. All right? It's, it has a lot to do with how you condition yourself, how you actually discipline yourself. Because get this, guys. Nobody was born with self-discipline. Nobody was actually ever born and then they had the self-discipline with, with them. It's something that you learn along the way. It is a learned behavior. Whether you want to or not, you will acquire some sort of a discipline, but your choice to make sure that the disciplines are a good one or a bad one. And Nicole says, this is one of my reasons why I listen to you. Oh, you're, you're too kind. Thank you so much. You know, just like any other skill that you want to master, guys, it's really daily practice, repetition, why do you think I show up every single day? Because I got to repeat. I got to instill it inside my brain that this is now what I am doing. This has become my life. And there's people that depend on me showing up. You know, you just don't go to the gym, lift heavy things or just do a couple of curls and then you have abs or you have, um, you know, biceps already. It's like going to the gym. Willpower, self-discipline. They take a lot of work, all right? They take a massive amount of commitment, but once you start doing it, it stops becoming work. 
So the effort and focus that you need um, to, to put on, on, on self-discipline might be draining. But if you know what you're going to be at the end of the day, if you know what your uh, mission is going to be at the end of it all, that will move you. That will constantly make sure that you are working away. You don't even count the cost. You don't even count the hours. You don't even count whenever it's wrong. All you're doing is you're just plugging away and doing what you're meant to be doing. You know why? Because your life depends on it. Because it does. The more you derail yourself from being self-disciplined, the more you're going to indulge in things that are either going to maim you, you're going to die early, or you're going to die miserable, or you're not going to have dignity at your death. You know why? Because you're just stuck in some old people's home and people are just kicking you around like you're, you're worth nothing. I want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable so that your story, your life is going to mean something. All right. As time passes, you know, it might become difficult and more difficult to, to maintain that willpower in check. But the smaller pieces that you do, you are way better than half of the population out there. You know, the bigger, the bigger the temptation or the bigger the goal, the harder it is to actually maintain. That's why so many people can do it. But the little that you do, you know, is going to get you closer and closer to where you really want to go. And it's all to do with the self-discipline, your health, your mind, your, your welfare, the people around you, the relationships, your money, everything. Yeah? The more challenging it can feel to, to actually tackle these tasks, it, it's going to require more and more willpower. That's why when you're going, um, when you're going uphill, you, you press a little bit more on the accelerator so you get the, the, the wheels turning a bit faster. So work on building your self-discipline through daily diligence. Every single thing that you do matters. Every person that you talk to matters. Every like, every heart, every reaction that you put out there on social media matters. Just make sure it's to your benefit at the end of the day. And Deborah says, oh, I wanted a magic bullet. Thank you so much for that. All right. And like I said, we are humans and we are creatures of habit. So just start maintaining the habits that you have, but make them new and, 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 and better so that w whenever you wake up, you're just doing the habits that are making you do the right things. Yeah. Because when, when you start getting that self-discipline and working to, to instill new habits, apparently it takes 20 days, 30 days, or whatever, 61 days, depending on what science uh, thinks of that day. It can feel daunting at first. You know what I mean? Because your mind does not like change. Everybody does not like change. But if you put your focus on the end goal, you will notice that nothing in between will ever stop you. So half of the time when you look at your audacious goals, you might just feel intimidated. Or if you see people that are already doing those things, you feel very intimidated. Just keep it simple, guys. Break your goal into small doable steps. If you want to create a hundred million dollar business like me, break it into four steps. The first step is this consulting and, you know, talking to people and, and, and creating content, etc., etc. Then the next step is, is going to be the coaching and actually buying those coaching businesses. And the fourth step is to create a software as a service that will then go out far and wide. And then the fourth step is just a philanthropy bit. Instead of you trying to change everything all at once, just focus on doing just one simple thing consistently. And then once you start mastering that thing, because every level has its own devil, right? Once you've got the devils from be uh, below here, the next step will be easy. You know why? Because this is now under control, right? So if you're trying to get in shape or if you're trying to really have a business that's profitable in 2018, just maybe start working out 10 to 15 minutes a day. Start reaching out to people, five to ten new uh, people a day. If you're, you know, maybe just trying to achieve, you know, better sleeping habits, start going to bed 15 minutes earlier without your phone. 
It's just changing small things. And you would notice that the smaller the change, the bigger the, 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 the lasting effect. But if you try and make bigger changes, then every Monday coming out from that is going to be a problem. If you want to eat healthier, start prepping a bag of lunch the night before. If you hate Monday, start preparing your day the, 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 the Sunday before. Yeah, just take baby steps. And eventually when you're ready, you can, you know, you can be adding more goals to your list. And the more you know how to do all these things, you're doing them subconsciously and you're just doing the habits at the top level. Yeah, at the end of the day, this is all about you guys. This is just simply about you. You know, something, something is going to be keeping you, um, you know, needing to change. Something is going to want you to change or to evolve. Don't let yourself get wrapped up in guilt, anger or frustration just because whatever emotions you're, you're going through right now, I, um, you know, are dragging you down. All right? Just learn what your weaknesses are, what your missteps have been, and just forgive yourself and do baby steps every single time. Then when you head back into the game, you refocus on your goals and you're unstoppable. All right? This is the start of the week, guys. I really hope this video finds you in a position where you are now ready to scale up, to actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if it's about creating content for, you know, your, your audiences, because people buy from people that they know, like, and trust, but you have to be consistent. You have to be there for them in order for them to actually realize that you're the person that um, will be there to help you. And if I can be of any assistance, if I can be of any help for you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, I want to help you sort of curate an online footprint that will out, you know, outlast you and make sure that your business becomes profitable and enjoyable. Don't hesitate to get in touch. And those that have watched up until the end, um, please share the video just in case, you know, we can spread the word and help other people to be, do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your week. I'll catch you guys up tomorrow. Um, same time and we will sit down again for the next 30 minutes so that we can discuss and figure out how we can help you um, have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day.